All right, John. So can a customer run a vCenter server on the very same vSAN cluster that it manages? Uh, the answer to this is absolutely. Um, while, you know, sometimes people will say it is a best practice to, to put your management plane in a separate cluster. Um, and this is commonly done in large environments. Um, not everyone has, you know, a management cluster. And then even then that management cluster needs some of its management components in itself, or you would just have added phantom management clusters till we've run out of hosts in the world. So this is a scenario that is fully supported. It is operationalized. Um, as we've covered in another video, a cluster will keep operating if its vCenter is offline. You can restore that vCenter server. You can deploy a new one and graph that in. Those are both supported processes that are documented. Um, as a reminder, please always back up your, your vCenter servers. But this is, you know, there, there's tooling in order within the health, vSAN health service. If you connect to the host directly and use the host UI um, that you'll you log in using the root credentials, you will find you can actually use the vSAN health service by visualization. The vSAN health service also actually runs, it's distributed on the host. It doesn't just run on the, the vCenter server. So in a vCenter server outage, if you're trying to troubleshoot, you can also SSH into the host and run the command line tooling to, to do that. So in a perfect world, you know, obviously we have management clusters and we put management tooling there. Um, but this is a thing that definitely people have to do from time to time, and it absolutely is supported. Yeah, management clusters are certainly great, and we all would I prefer to have them, we know. But uh, sometimes the sizes of the environment simply don't um, you know, require it or make it where it really makes sense. So uh, the good part is, and I think once again, this is, can be a, a great scenario for you to test out in a lab so that you can really better understand how uh, vCenter behaves in these sorts of uh, scenarios where it is managing the cluster that the vCenter server lives in. So, and then once you work with that, you gain that confidence uh, in doing so fully or in your production environment. Well, and I think one kind of false assumption that necessitates this question a lot of times is the assumption that vCenter must be online for vSphere HA to work. So what happens if a host fails that was running my vCenter server? HA still operates. So HA use vCenter to configure it. But once it's configured, it will continue to operate even with a vCenter down. Um, mm -hmm. You just can't make changes and things like that. But the one one little trick I will give everyone, um, if you're using DRS, use the affinity should, not the must, just the should rule, and stick your vCenter on the first host in the cluster. So that way, if you're trying to figure out where your vCenter was when you left it, if there's an outage or some situation, you're trying to figure out where to log in to manually power it on, uh, for whatever reason, if HA didn't work, you could find it there. Um, also, if you don't have DRS, just leave it there and it'll stay there. But, you know, with DRS, obviously it might vMotion back and forth. So that affinity rule, like vCenter and maybe one of the domain controllers or NTP servers, um, put the earning authentication bits, have one of those instances, DRS, uh, affinity there that way in a complete vCenter down scenario, you're, you know, or maybe it's failing to boot for some reason, you would know where to go to look for it at least. You'd, and that'll just save you the time versus having to go log into all 10 hosts in the cluster.